Hello, everyone. Thank you for taking the time to join us today. My name is Ashley. I'm the regulatory and po policy analyst here at People for Bikes. Uh, we're so excited to go over the board and committee member orientation with you all. We have a lot of great information to share with you today. Uh, some logistical items in case you've never used GoToWebinar before. You will be muted throughout the webinar, but there is a questions box. I see somebody already submitted a question here. Um, if you can click on that to expand, write in your question and we'll answer all the questions at the end. So feel free uh, to use that as often as you like and we'll get to the questions at the end. Um, moving forward, I'll let our presenters today introduce themselves. Jen, do you wanna take it away? Yep, thank you, Ashley. Um, thanks for organizing us and thanks for everyone for being here. Uh, my name's Jen Dice. Uh, I help with Morgan. We lead the business network of People for Bikes. I've been at PFB Muted. for seven years and work in the government, policy, advocacy, and bike industry space. So excited to walk you through um, our board and committee member orientation. All right. Hi, everyone. This is Morgan Lomley. I'm the Director of State and Local Policy here at People for Bikes. I've been at People for Bikes for about five years. My very first task on day one was facilitating our electric bike subcommittee and been working on electric bike policy and state and local policy, legal and legislative issues um, since then. And happy to be here and happy to have you all join us. Um, thanks, Ashley. Great, we will start off with just a sincere and honest thank you for your service and for volunteering to be part of our leadership in our industry coalition. Obviously, without our volunteer leaders steering the ship and um, driving our strategic vision, we couldn't do the work we do. So thank you for your volunteer service. Thank you for your coalition membership. Without um, dues, we couldn't um, serve our mission. So thank you for stepping up volunteering and helping leading um, or thinking about this orientation is also for people that are thinking about joining one of our boards and committees and we appreciate that as well. Morgan's going to quickly walk you through our agenda next. Sure, we have a packed agenda. We'll be done in about 15 minutes and want to leave a bunch of time for questions, but just covering some of the items that we know are top of mind for folks looking to either join one of our um, boards or subcommittees or who have just joined we get a lot of questions about what exactly is people for bikes and where do i fit in and hopefully that'll answer all your questions we'll talk about people for bikes mission how the organization is structured our key programs initiatives um, and the importance of serving and the importance of not just having staff do the work day to day but relying on our industry members to um, relay our information and relay information back to us and serve as ambassadors to people for bikes. So that'll uh, roll into uh, committee missions and responsibilities, do's and don'ts, things we expect you to do and things we hope you won't do when you, when you help us if you're serving, um, and what's in it for you, the benefits of serving on a, a committee or board for your industry trade association, and then we'll close it out with some resources and leave plenty of time to answer questions that folks have about um, your role and anything we covered today. Next slide. Starting with the basic People for Bikes 101, um, you'll see a press release out in Brain today actually that since we merged with the BPSA, we have 61 brand new members. These are members that weren't part of BPSA or PFB. So 61 new companies have joined our coalition. We've got 100 new leaders that are on our boards or our subcommittees or our task force. And we get a lot of questions. And so we thought we'd start with the basic PFB 101. And as a reminder, our mission is to get more people on bikes more often and to make bike riding better for everyone. And we layer in also creating an environment where bicycling and the bike industry thrive. And that's a lot of the folks on this call and serving on our committee structure come from the bike industry. Uh, it's important to note, we actually have two different segments of People for Bikes. We have a 501c3 philanthropic foundation, and we have a 501c6 trade association that's the business arm. We sort of blur those together when we talk about People for Bikes generally, uh, but we, internally a breakout uh, for IRS purposes, our programs behind the scenes. Um, we've got 1.3 million supporters in our grassroots network that have signed up for more and better biking. On the business side of things, we have 271 supplier brands and about 1,005 retailer ride spot members. Our 
our retailer membership is through our Ride Spot program. Uh, we're based in Colorado um, and Washington, D.C. We've got a staff of about 26 of us in Colorado and a couple, uh, couple people in our nation's capital. Next, going through our organizational structure, back to that 501c3 uh, philanthropic foundation and our 501c6 trade association, we thought it might help just to start with the, the basic org chart. Uh, we're going to go through the programs in a second, but before then, over on the 501c3 is our Places for Bikes program, our work with cities, our grassroots supporter network, and our kids and youth initiatives. On the C6 side of things is a lot of people from this call, actually, and people that are on our board of directors, our People for Bikes board. Um, they might serve on our BPSA Trade Association Committee, which was formerly the BPSA board. And we mer when we merge together, we call it the TAC or the Trade Association Committee. Underneath it, we've got five different um, subcommittees, and we'll go into them in detail a little bit later. Uh, but that's sort of the working arm. These are and a lot of the volunteers here today. These are the folks that help us get the work done. They're volunteer leaders, they're content area experts that help us really shape our direction and mission so that our staff can go out and implement um, the, what the industry needs. And the final thing I'd highlight on the org chart is in the middle, you see a little um, dash down through the middle to our bikes political action committee. Uh, that is a different um, classification. It's a small but mighty political action committee in Washington, D.C. that our federal policy team runs, and we invest in members of Congress that believe in biking and champion biking ca bike causes. So a lot of folks that are part of our leadership structure also personally contribute to our bikes pack and our work in Washington, D.C. Uh, next, we'll go to Morgan on programs and initiatives. Sure. So how do we weave a web that gets more people riding bikes more often? And we, I, I would summarize this slide with a lot of our different programs into three main initiatives. One is building better places to ride. The second is working at all levels of government, local, state, and federal, to secure funding for bicycling, ensure that the rights of bicyclists are preserved, and just do all the things to, at those levels of government that elevate bicycling and um, make it a, kind of a um, move it beyond just something that's for just recreation, but also for transportation. And the third is talking about bicycling and a lot of our marketing programs. And so when you think about all our different uh, programs that you see, uh, everything from advocacy and web advocacy alerts to webinars to lobbying to um, issuing grants to small organizations, these all serve to elevate bicycling uh, on the radar of elected officials and decision makers and community and stakeholder support groups across the country and uh, simply at the end of the day provide the mechanisms to build better places to ride bikes and to preserve those places uh, for people. So all of the different programs that we design and implement um, are, are done so with that, that final goal of simply making it easier for someone to feel comfortable riding their bikes, have a safe place to ride their bike, and, and know that, that that right in those places will be preserved in the long term. Next slide, Ashley. So we need you. So it, it's one thing for our team of 26 to 20 folks to be implementing a lot of these programs, but we're the industry, I and mean, that 501c6 side that Jen talked about is the industry trade association. You all have the expertise, you work day in and day out, making bicycles, selling them, understanding consumers, and our work is really guided by the expertise of the folks on our boards and at our subcommittees. Without that, we wouldn't be able to respond to what your business needs are. We wouldn't be able to utilize you to be ambassadors for us um, at all levels of government. And um, we, we really rely on you for your guidance so that our work is in response to many of the business conditions that are out there and many of the needs of cyclists. And you all know best what those needs are. Those are the consumers we work to benefit. We also rely on you for industry connections. Uh, I'll give a quick example. I, I manage our electric bicycle subcommittee and a lot of times I need to know, for example, Anecdotally, what are some of the stories we're hearing out there about cost to electric bicycles, for example? How are they being used? What are some of the safety implications? And that sounds kind of granular, but I look to the industry for connections to the consumer, connections to retailers, and connections to 
uh, decision makers in, in your area to know how our, our programs can be the most robust and the most beneficial. Um, we look to you for peer support. So go to bat for us with peers in the industry. Um, make sure that you use your role out you use your role to reach out to folks in the industry to further our agenda and um, provide us with those connections. So we have about 80 to 90 folks on our boards and subcommittees, and we consider you all kind of our feelers out to the broader industry. And um, we rely on you to be an ambassador for our mission and carry that voice forward um, in places where um, our voice as the trade association isn't as powerful as your voice as a business owner or operator or an executive at a business. Next slide. So we'll get into um, the different boards and subcommittees and Jen will kick us off with our coalition board of directors. Great. When you hear us talk about our PFB board, that's our Pi People for Bikes Coalition board of directors over on the 501c6. The mission is going to look familiar to put more people on bikes more often, to make every bike ride better for everyone, and to create an environment where bicycling and the bike industry th thrive. This is a 15 member board. They meet twice a year and we make sure that this board, um, even though it's just on the 501c6 side, technically, we make sure this board knows absolutely everything that's happening with the organization on the 501c3 with Bikes Pack, you know, the breadth and depth of people for bikes. The next one is the BPSA Trade Association Committee. Morgan, I think is gonna take us through that one. Sure. So the the 501c6 board of directors, um, Jen mentioned their role. We also are guided by what's formerly known as the BPSA board. So in uh, on July 1, 2019, People for Bikes, um, the Bicycle Product Suppliers Association merged into one stronger uh, industry trade association, and we we kind of. Uh, morphed the BPSA board into what we now call the BPSA Trade Association Committee. So we really rely on this group of industry leaders to help us understand um, uh, how to shape our pro-business policy agenda, how to shape our trade and tariff work so that we're responsive to the needs of the industry. We know how to prioritize our asks and our requests and our appeals. We truly rely on this group of folks to help us understand how securing funding for better bike infrastructure helps them market bicycles, um, sell more bicycles at the end of the day. And then another critical point is helping us design a lot of our data and statistics uh, research programs so that we're providing really high level business intelligence information to all segments of the bike industry. So this group meets uh, three to four times a year for about uh, a day or two at a time and helps set um, most of our policy legal and legislative agenda. Next step we have our four uh, subcommittees and a working group. Morgan and I will go back and forth and explain these subcommittees really quickly. Uh, but the mission of this one again is encourage new PFB members, improve member benefits, shape industry conferences, continuing education, and help steer our consumer facing marketing campaign called Ride Spot. So this group of this committee, and you can go to the next slide so they can see the members of it as it stands here in 2020. Um, the meme committee, you know, really thinks about um, member benefits. How are we serving our industry? Uh, who is not part of our industry coalition? And these folks help us go after uh, membership targets that haven't joined and that we hope are getting close to joining the coalition. They think a lot about events. When events are able to, to be back up and running, they help produce the Bicycle Leadership Conference, uh, our draft meetups, and think about networking from C-suite to uh, leaders that you're trying to cultivate within your organization. And they helped co-create our industry consumer-facing campaign ride spot. You know, on the front end, that's how we show people great places to ride and point to our infrastructure. On the back end, that's our industry data play on where are our customers riding, what are they riding, and we, how do we use that data to better inform our city infrastructure decisions and our places for bikes program. So this committee, the meme committee, helps on consumer-facing campaign and marketing, continuing education and events and uh, membership, cultivating new members and making sure we have great membership benefits.
legal, legislative, and safety committee. So relatively self-explanatory, but an analogy I'll give is that the work, <laughs> if you think about all the places where people ride bikes, that's all generally on areas that a local, state, or federal government manages. And so, uh, and if you think about all the different implications to making and selling bikes, that's managed by a variety of different government entities as well. So we need the bicycle voice at the table in all of those conversations. And the last analogy I'll get hopefully for today is if you think about, just as an example, the National Rights Association, the NRA has a lobbyist for every single member of Congress and everything that's sold and made and in general in the United States has a voice at all levels of government. So this is a committee that shapes that voice at all levels of government. Um, uh, whether it's um, on trade and tariff issues that I mentioned before, really helping shape our asks to the federal government for transportation related funding, thinking about a lot of the consumer product standards at the state and federal levels that guide manufacturing. We represent the voice of the bicycle business. We have lobbyists in DC and around the country who help us further this agenda. You'll see this list of uh, folks who were um, on the legal legislative and safety committee who meet about once a month and help shape our agenda um, in um, relative to those areas. At the bicycle subcommittee, so for those of you who know me and recognize me, this is what's near and dear to my heart. And just for some quick context, we have a dedicated e-bike subcommittee uh, in order to primarily advance progressive e-bike laws in all 50 states and that at the federal level too, both for recreation and transportation. And in about a great example of how our uh, subcommittee structure has benefited our work and really provided us eyes and ears on the ground is in a five plus years, we've been able to essentially restructure the way that, that electric bicycles are defined at the state and federal levels with the support of our industry members, who you'll see um, on the next slide here. So we heavily utilized uh, the manufacturers and suppliers that you'll see on this list and their expertise to help shape how defining electric bikes and updating um, the way they're regulated at all levels of government um, essentially helps the market environment for e-bikes and helps more people understand where they can ride and how they can ride and really gives e-bike riders the same rights as bicyclists. And so that's a critical aspect that supports the growth of the e-bike market and the, this subcommittee has steered that work and changed the entire landscape of the e-bike policy environment. So, our work continues on that front, and we're um, uh, this uh, with the BPSA PFD merger. This this group has come under the PFD umbrella, and we continue to utilize the expertise of the, these folks to help guide our policy work. Our final subcommittee is the Research and Stats Subcommittee. You know, grow the mission, grow the bicycle industry through insightful and actionable research and market intelligence. Um, you know, this committee works with NPD on the sell-in and sell-through data that you get each month. Uh, they work on our data quality, which um, is good, and we desire it to be great. Um, they think a lot about educational resources, what webinars we can offer, what dashboards, uh, what actionable insights that we can bring to fruition so that it can really help your business. Um, and uh, this committee also, if you want to go to the next slide, Ashley, so we can see the members, is that um, this committee also thinks a lot about bike participation and how we're growing it. Uh, every two years, People for Bikes conducts our bike participation study for the bike industry. And in 2018 was the last iteration. We'll do it again here in 2020. Uh, and they, this committee thinks about the integration between bike participation, uh, bike sales, online, use market, use market, et cetera. We'll have a really exciting announcement coming out in about a week about a brand new data dashboard that the volunteer members of this committee um, brought to fruition that will really be a game changer um, for a member benefit and for market intelligence. And finally, um, we have a brand new working group, the sustainability working group that Morgan will walk you through. Yeah, so the, the, what the sustainability working group is doing is a standalone group looking at improving the bicycle. It's a partnership with Outdoor Industry Association, and it's generally how we can um, improve supply chain and manufacturing that um, makes our industry more sustainable 
at the end of the day. So in partnership with the OIA and a number of industry um, members you'll see on the list, but one of the first tasks is to develop a um, restricted, restricted substances list, uh, hire and uh, a fellow to look at the general life cycle of, of a bike, and we haven't quite determined what that means in terms of bikes or bike parts, but provide a service to the industry in terms of insight on ways to improve the overall su supply chain from an environmental and sustainable point of view. So this work kicked off just a few months ago. We already have a pretty robust group of folks guiding that work. And um, the first thing you will all be able to see is that restricted substances list by the end of the year, and then taking that work forward into um, kind of a, a broader set of guidances and um, voluntary standards for the industry to, to abide by. And finally, walking you through our People for Bikes Foundation Board, and if you, as a reminder, it's back over on the 501c3 side. Um, that is where we do a lot of our city work, our places for bikes, city rating system, our measurement tools, our kids initiatives to get kids biking from age 20 or age 2 to 22. It's where our 1.3 million grassroots supporter network lives. And, you know, our mission again is to put more people on bikes more often and make every bike ride better for everyone. Um, going into the last part of our webinar, we wanted to walk you through just a couple board committee member do's and don'ts. I've served on, served on a lot of boards and commissions through the years and seen what works and what doesn't work. And we've had a lot of our new volunteers ask us for clear guide, guidelines, walking you through um, how to get the most out of your board service. And so we quick took the liberty of putting together some sort of do's and don'ts to sort of understand the difference between board and staff our strategic in initiatives and also our tactical execution. So do, you know, share your expertise. We want to hear your your opinion. We want to get your advice. Don't be shy. Um, second, you know, all uh, members serving have to be an employee of a dues paying member in good standing. So obviously the way our coalition works is that um, dues paying members are eligible to serve on committees. Uh, we ask you to put competition aside and when you're serving people for bikes and sitting in your committee leadership role we'd like you to leave your individual brand behind and put on the collective hat to grow the pie for everybody and to grow participation for everyone uh, it sounds mundane but the fifth data point is update your company data and the people for bikes directory and i can't tell you how critical that is we set a goal out several years ago to have the best most powerful industry database and we have that hands hands down um, but we need your data we need to know who works in your member companies so that they can find out what's going on with their industry campaign we can invite them to webinars and events and we can make sure that they're here for us when we have a big opportunity or threat for bicycling We'd ask you to use your network to help people for bikes. If there's a peer that you have in a non-member association, we'd love for you to reach out. Or if there's someone that has content area expertise that can help us um, shape our industry direction, we need your experts as well too. The next few bullet points are just, you know, simple about homework. You know, attend your committee meetings or send a proxy. You know, we'd love to have you attend some of our People for Bikes events. You certainly don't have to come to all of them, but from time to time, we'd love for you to attend a Washington DC fly-in or the Bicycle Leadership Conference or other continuing education opportunities. We'd love for you to, you know, participate in meetings, you know, come prepared, obviously, and respond to requests um, when, when we have a urgent or rapid response need. One big part of being an industry trade association is, um, we are on the front lines of any threats, any recalls, any um, liability issues, and also public comment periods. Great opportunities to expand bicycling um, and protect the bike industry. So we do ask when it's urgent and we need a rapid response, we'd love for your help in a timely manner. So we have a few dogs and these are just these are really guidelines and what they represent i'll go one issue by issue but what they represent is really the spirit of being part of an industry association um if you we want everyone's work to be in line with people for bikes mission and sorry i should restate that we want um our we want our work to be in alignment in general and when you're serving on a board or a subcommittee 
the items that you represent on behalf of the people for bikes um, or the foundation or the coalition should just be in line with what our mission is and what the what the um, board or subcommittee is working on so we we ask all committee members to um, not introduce product projects outside of the committee's jurisdiction the mission statements that you saw for each of the five subcommittees and, and the board and the TAC um, are where that work should lie. And so if there is a project that is of interest to a particular committee member, we just ask that that be brought to the chair and um, the, those folks in conversation will decide how to address it, how to table it, or what other subcommittee could take it on if, if, if that's an option. Um, we ask that you represent our industry or people for bikes. Um, in line with uh, our mission and um, not really represent the work that we do without consultation with the committee chair first. Um, we ask that you uh, ensure that uh, staff executes ideas and that the boards and the subcommittees provide the strategy. It is our pleasure to work on behalf of the industry and work on behalf of these subcommittees and the boards and the actual execution of the um, the, the mission and the day-to-day -day activities to further the mission of the subcommittees really rests on people for bike shoulders. Um, please don't withhold uh, public information. For example, if, if on behalf of PFB or your subcommittee, you are attending a, a meeting, um, that should really be information that's shared in advance and after the meeting with the board chair and, and the, or the committee um, chair and the committee as a whole. If you have assignments for your subcommittee or your board, just feel free to email um, the, <clears throat> the chair and the people for rights leadership and not staff directly. That just helps us organize and prioritize and make sure that we're updated on everything that needs to be done and that we can respond in an organized fashion. And then the last one here, <laughs> um, just the, understand that a lot of our meetings happen over the phone, especially in this day and age, and making space for a variety of different personalities and a variety of different um, types of people to speak is, is of critical importance and that's how we make sure that everyone has a voice and everyone in the absence of an in-person meeting can participate and is given space to do so. And we just know that when we set up enough time on calls and video conference calls to make sure that everyone has a chance to provide their input, it just makes for um, a better culture and, and uh, a more productive meeting. So. These are some of the things that we've learned the hard way that are important to communicate in advance and so far no issues and um, everyone is, is such a wonderful contributor to our efforts that we hope to carry these forward. And our final slide is what's in it for you? You know, this should be fun. We work in bikes. We love our work. As Morgan said, it's a pleasure to serve the bike industry and it's a pleasure to advocate um, for bicycling all across the world. And so we, we, our commitment to board service is that we're, we want to make our board meetings fun, intera interactive, and of course we want to include a bike ride when we can. Um, no, second is what's in it for you is confidence that your service matters. Your opinions, your reading and weighing in on things, the questions that you ask, the meetings that you attend, it truly matters and it shapes every aspect of our work and we as your professional staff know that we can't do it without you so know that um, whether it's only a quarterly call or a monthly call or only a couple times a year um, we find that extremely valuable time well spent um, and it really informs um, so much more than you even know about all aspects of how we shape our, our member organization third you know take pride in knowing that you're steering your industry um, you're giving back and um, your work is truly meaningful. Uh, fourth, uh, we love that you as a leader can model that to your peers. A lot of folks are looking at you and your companies, your consumers are wondering what you're doing to give back and how you're serving and part of a larger solution. Your leadership here on this committee and your committee membership of overall People for Bikes um, is truly a model that inspires others to give and to make a difference and to change the world through bikes. And finally, networking. I can't tell you how many times when we have an e-bike summit or a fly into Washington DC or to Sacramento or even a draft meetup, we constantly get men and women from the bike industry telling us how um, they never really thought that they were part of a larger organization or they uh, didn't have an opportunity to meet some of their peers and network and learn from other companies. And that's part of our underlying work to engage more of the bike industry is we're going to be networking you more 
online and in person uh, because we love bringing people together and seeing the magic that can happen when members of the bike industry and leaders meet each other um, and help grow the pie and participation and make a better environment for the whole bike industry. So those are the things that are in it for you. Fun, confidence, pride, leadership, uh, and networking opportunities. And now we'll go to the last slide and open it up for questions. Happy to answer any questions. And also know that Ashley, uh, who organized all of this work for us today, um, also has created a very detailed, fantastic online uh, resource page for you that she can list up and we'll list here in the final webinar um, for many more resources um, that are online of how to serve and to understand our mission and our individual committees. Um, but do we want to open it up to questions? And Ashley, do you want to maybe say that link to that website? Unmuted. Yeah, uh, the link will be sent to all attendees after the webinar. Um, it'll be easier to access, but just be on the lookout for your email. Ten minutes after the webinar, you'll have it, and you can check it out today. How about questions? Here's a good question about, it's more about how do you shortly summarize um, what we do? And uh, I like to say we grow bicycling um, and or we help grow bicycling in the bike industry. We help cities rapidly expand connected bike networks and measure their progress. And we reduce barriers to cycling and show people great rides. That's kind of the bigger mouthful elevator pitch. You heard our mission before to put more people on bikes more often and to make every bike ride better for everyone. How about other questions? One that I, this is more different. Sorry, one that I get a lot is, you know, what's a good example of a board member getting involved in a specific project or kind of getting to see real, real world results that benefit um, the bike industry? So, an example I, I always come back to is the state of Wyoming um, now has a three class e bike law, and that issue was 100% spearheaded by a local retailer in Cheyenne, Wyoming named Patrick Collins, who has a shop called the Bicycle Station. And Patrick is a well known community member. He served on a number of boards. I think he even served in some elected government um, positions in, in his part of Wyoming and took our model bill, um, organized all 20 bike retailers in Wyoming around this bill and shepherded it through the Wyoming State Legislature. And that is, without his support, I wouldn't have had the connections, the credibility, and especially just the boots on the ground to to see that forward and for him to do that directly benefited his business now he has a clear um, kind of legal environment to sell um, electric bicycles to his customers and he's seen e-bike sales triple in the last year since that, that law was passed thanks to him so he did most of the organizing around it and we provided the technical expertise and a lot of the background material to do it but on a more on a broader scale, I mentioned that we're involved at all levels of government and having your voice uh, in support or even against a bill that we support or oppose carries so much weight. So we try to motivate folks to get a letter on your company's letterhead and send that in um, and that, you know, above and beyond uh, has an above and beyond value than our trade association um, sending in a letter. So I, the, the lesson there is when we make an ask, and we try to do it sparingly to respect your time and, and make it as valuable as possible, but when we make an ask, know that it really does make a difference and we're, um, we're doing it because decision makers listen to the voice of business above and beyond anything else. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you, Morgan. Thank you, volunteer board members, and get out and ride your bike. Have a great day. Thank you, everyone. Bye.